Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey, and I'm back again with more gems of wisdom from the 2023 Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting, where we got to learn from the best investors of all time, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, and their general advice for us to be the best investors and parents we could possibly be. And with that, I'm going to discuss three questions from shareholders at the meeting, and they include what I think is one of the outstanding headlines that we should know about in that basically Warren Buffett believes that Berkshire Hathaway will likely be worth in terms of market cap at least one and a half trillion dollars in about 12 to 15 years from now. And I think that's pretty impressive because that suggests that Berkshire Hathaway will grow at at least 7% per year over the next dozens of years and how no corporate raider or activist will be able to take over Berkshire at that point, as well as how America's moving more toward tribalism, even though we've always had partisanship, but it's getting kind of worse and what we can do about it, as well as his advice about estate planning and making sure we have a will in place if you're a parent or if you have a parent and they're aging and you kind of want to be prepared for that time of when wealth may be passed on to the next generation. So with all that, if you enjoy my videos learning from the best investors, Buffett and Munger, I hope you'll like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel. And let's get into some of these lessons. The first question and answer I'd like to discuss is how one shareholder was a little bit worried about how in spite of Berkshire Hathaway being this financial fortress, he worries that after Warren Buffett passes away, that maybe after all of Buffett's shares are donated to various charities, that perhaps some activist or corporate raider like Carl Icahn or the like could take over Berkshire Hathaway and they won't be able to maintain the kind of business structure and cultural influence that maybe Berkshire has had over the last 58 years under Buffett's helm. And so even though Berkshire has a boatload of cash, like I know Buffett said that they have over $130 billion of liquid assets that somehow perhaps all of that could get ruined in about a dozen years plus if somehow the people next in line to manage Berkshire Hathaway were to not be able to withstand the effects of activist pressure on Berkshire Hathaway. So with that, Buffett answered that they've thought about this a lot and that also he doesn't worry about it that much. He said it's true that Greg Abel, the future CEO and the directors, will have a honeymoon period for a long time simply because a lot of the votes from legacy shareholders will still remain. But it's also true that eventually the new management and board of directors will get judged on how Berkshire Hathaway performs in the future. And also, he said that if Berkshire doesn't pay any dividends in 12 or 15 years, you're talking that it would take a trillion and a half dollars in order to take over Berkshire Hathaway. So like I mentioned in my intro, it seems that with Berkshire's current market cap of about $700 billion as of late May 2023, that could basically double in about a dozen or so years. So if you think about that, it's not a bad bet if we wanted to invest in Berkshire Hathaway shares, especially, say, Berkshire B shares that are currently trading at around $320 per share. So kind of more affordable for retail investors that you may be out there listening to this video and it might give you an interesting prospect of potential investments you might want to make compared to other things like, say, an S&P 500 index fund, which may not perform nearly as well as it had been over the last several years. But that potential investment idea aside, he also goes on to say that he would like to think that nobody can come close to taking over Berkshire Hathaway themselves. And he thinks that it's important that Berkshire be regarded as a national asset rather than a national liability. So Berkshire has got to be a plus to the country with their current form of operation. And Buffett says that we certainly have got a record which will be then in 12 to 15 years done with much more capital and more companies and more things will have happened where there are hundreds of billions of dollars can work its way into the economy in terms of lots of jobs, 
products and behavior and he thinks that they will win out if they deserve to win out and he thinks that the odds of that happening are very very high and i think that's important to also reflect on because like both charlie and warren have talked about in the past you'll be successful if you deserve it so we can't just expect that things will be handed to us but we have to continue to work hard and deserve our success so i know that's definitely a lesson that has been imparted from Charlie onto Warren. And I think that's also something that as long as Greg Abel and others who work at Berkshire Hathaway deserve it and they continue to work hard and do well for the company and the society at large, then most likely Berkshire will do well in the future. The next question and answer I'd like to reflect on is about how America has been kind of moving toward this concept of tribalism and how that's a bad thing. And the shareholder's question goes as follows, where he mentioned that Buffett has reminded shareholders to never bet against America. And with that, he asked, what do you think are the most important things for Berkshire to remain strong? On the risk side, if the strength of the country is undermined, what could be the reasons? And Buffett answers that they've had a lot of tests. He said that we're such a young country, and when you think about Japan and the United States, it's just incredible how new we are to the block. And he said he thinks we're about 234 years since we started, but that would make us have started since 1789, which I think it's more like maybe he meant 247 years since 1776. So I don't know about that math right there, Warren. Normally he's pretty sharp, but this time maybe we'll cut the 92 year old some slack. So he goes on to say, that Charlie and him combined, they've lived about two thirds of the country. And, you know, we've had a civil war and made some bad choices. So in spite of that, we've had enormous advantages along the way because we started out with say only one half of 1% of the world's population back in 1790. And now we're close to 25% of the world's GDP. So we've had some incredible advantages with our land and how we're surrounded by two oceans and we've had good neighbors and America is a miracle. And he said, how do we keep the good parts of the system by calling out our obvious defects? And even though it's not done in a smooth way, like it's done in a very herky jerky manner, he said that net the United States is a better place to live than when he was born by a huge factor. And he was just reflecting on how he got a root canal about a week ago and how he's totally a fan of Novocaine and that wasn't maybe around back when he was born and how we could romanticize about the past, but we shouldn't do that. We should think about how much work we have left to do. And now we have the atom bomb and he mentioned that a couple of times to, in the meeting where he talked about the advent of the atom bomb and how big of a deal that is. And also it's as disruptive as maybe AI might be. So we have to just keep in mind how far the United States and countries around the world have advanced, all things considered. And he continues in saying that he wishes the atom had never been split, but it has been, and we can't put it back in the bottle. So the challenges we have are huge. And even when his father was in Congress in the 1940s, it looked like a mess back then, but then we got unified by World War II to some degree. And now we still have partisanship and it's trending in a worse direction toward tribalism, where he thinks that tribalism just doesn't work as well. And when it gets to tribalism, you don't even hear the other side and it could lead to mobs. So overall, it's not a good look for the US, the more that we continue in this negative direction. So we need to come together in a more positive, constructive way. And also he says that we have to keep working on refining our democracy as we go along. But if Buffett had the choice of any place in the world to be born, it would be in the United States. So that kind of reminds me of Born in the USA song by Bruce Springsteen. So no matter the amount of gloom and doom in the world, the United States is still one of the best places that anyone could possibly hope to be born. Or if you can become an American citizen, that might be the next best thing. So there's still plenty of opportunity if you have the ability to be in the US. And also he would want to be born today in that this is a better world than we've ever had. And he also think that we still have problems, but 
you know, the population has rapidly grown and it's an exciting world. And even though we've got a lot of solutions to figure out because we have important problems, we shouldn't kid ourselves that something magical is going to happen where everybody's going to come together and we'll all just cheer and problems will go away by 2050. So it won't be kumbaya, but if we work hard, we'll figure it out. And also we will need to adapt as Buffett points out. So even though he turned a little bit pessimistic here in saying that he would say so far, it doesn't look very promising, but he also thinks that Lincoln may have looked out at what's going on in the Civil War and didn't think it looked so promising back then either. So in spite of that, he thinks the US is capable of doing remarkable things and it wouldn't surprise him if we're able to do it again. And Charlie said that he's less optimistic than Warren is, but he thinks that the best road ahead to human happiness is to expect less. And he thinks that it's going to get tougher. And he thinks that a lot of brilliant and young people going into wealth management is a crazy development in terms of natural consequences for American civilization. And we just don't need as many wealth managers as we have. But then Buffett tried to redirect Charlie a little bit in trying to tell him you wouldn't want to be going back to the time when you were born back on January 1st, 1924, would you, Charlie? And he said he would hate to go back to that time. So he just thinks that, you know, we have more of these wealth managers because it's reflecting the fact that there's more wealth in the world, but he doesn't think everybody should go into wealth management. So he thinks the world has gone a little crazy now, but Buffett has kind of tried to lighten things up with saying, take your choice. So either go into wealth management or do something else that may be to the benefit of the world. And finally, the last note I wanna end on is someone was an estate planning lawyer from Texas and he had this big football analogy about how parents with the business are like quarterbacks who throw a football, the business to the receivers or the children who might inherit a business or wealth after parents were to pass away. And he asked Buffett, what is his advice about wills and estate planning? Because apparently those kinds of things are not really well discussed between parents and their children. So Buffett said that, you know, in his family, he says that he does not sign a will until his three children have read it, understood it and made suggestions. And his children are in their 60s now and he wouldn't have been as successful if he tried to go over his will when they were in their 20s. So it depends on the family. It depends how much wealth and what kinds of assets are being passed on to the kids and also how the family dynamic is and how the kids feel about each other. So you have to take it on a case by case basis. But he also says that parents are failing a lot by not going over these important subjects with their children. So even though this is an incredibly important problem, it's not being discussed enough. So I'm glad that this person brought up the question, even though it was a bit of a long-winded question, but you know, what Charlie's advice is to people is he just said, hold the GD stock. So I'm kind of trying to keep it in PC terms so I don't get flagged by the algorithm, but basically, Charlie Munger's advice to everybody, especially the Munger family of whom we're probably sitting in the audience, is to just hold Berkshire stock or hold on to whatever stocks and assets that the Munger family owns. So if we think about that, we shouldn't think that we should just trade a lot. Like basically, if the Munger family were not to continue holding on to Berkshire stock and other equities, then they would do much worse. So basically you want to remain an owner of assets then think that you can play other kinds of games as far as maintaining wealth for future generations so we should keep some of that in mind if we want to hopefully do well and you know even though buffett and munger are in a totally different league because they have billions of dollars that they're mostly going to give to philanthropic organizations i think it's still pretty good advice of Hold on to your equities if you're passing it on to future generations and make sure your kids understand the will that the parents are working on. And it shouldn't be like a secret where all of a sudden after parents have passed away, then the children find out what's in the will. And another important point that I just wanted to end with that Buffett mentioned was to write your obituary and reverse engineer it. So whatever accomplishments you would hope to achieve in life, 
if you kind of think ahead as to what you would hope your obituary will contain, you might make your steps differently toward that end. If you think about it, work in reverse as to what you want to be remembered for. And I know that Buffett wants to be remembered as a teacher and not only this billionaire, incredible investor that he turned out to be. So with that, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well on your journey to being the best investor who gets along with people you work with and people in your community and is a good parent who will get your kids on the right path so that they can also become wealthy and pass on into future generations all these gems of wisdom that we've been so lucky to learn from Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Till next time.